Hello, friends. Welcome to Brainworms, the podcast that catches your eye from across a crowded bus, reaches into its pocket, and, still maintaining eye contact, starts eating a single slice of salami. I'm Joe. I'm David. I'm Kane. And I'm Chris. Hey, do you want to be cool, listeners? I want to be cool, desperately. Actually, I want to interrupt you. Okay. So, many moons ago, my consciousness was on a bus in Chicago. Yeah. And a young lady got on the bus. She was dragging two suitcases behind her. She then sat in the chair on the bus directly across from me because it was the section of the bus where instead of forward facing, it was inward facing chairs. Mm -hmm. Reached into her luggage, pulled out a block of Cheddar Jack. Okay. Wow. Peeled back the plastic and began to ravenously consume it just candy bar style yes that's a bold play i don't know what it is about cheese at least for me slices love it chunk oh i don't know what it is i mean i i enjoy cheese in like a chunk form but no it was just you mentioning the salami yeah yeah no i, I, I totally get the connection it awoke that section of <laughs> of memory and i was forced to discuss it so my apologies for the derailment no no please go back to what you were that's saying that's way way better than the time that i woke up on the subway in chicago with human feces under my chair was it yours <laughs> the fact that it was under your chair will always baffle me me too and terrify me <laughs> yeah I'm going to Just, assume that Oprah Winfrey put it there. I'm going to assume that someone watched David pass out, probably due to alcohol. Yeah, largely. Yeah. Once this person was convinced David was good and asleep, decided that he was going to deliver or she was going to deliver a gift to David, like a, a Christmas presents under the tree and just pulled down trowel, leaned under the you know, backwards under the chair that he was sleeping on and just dropped a deuce. It's like some sort of benevolent fae spirit that comes in and like sews your socks together. <laughs> like, yeah, the, the poop fairy. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, all I'm saying is I fell asleep. I passed out on the L in an empty car. Mm -hmm. And when I woke up, there was a family across from me and a little kid who looked over and said, oh my God, that's poop. <laughs> <laughs> i'm assuming the kid put it there and was a master con artist i'm assuming that david did it i just <laughs> sleep shat sleep shat <laughs> that child put that shit under your seat and then waited until the moment that they saw you stirring and just alerted you to its presence well played small chicago child I'm going to take that story a bit further, because this was the hand of destiny. So the kid was walking with his mom past a hobo who had human feces by him for any number of reasons. The child then heard the voice of fate say, take the poop. So the kid took it, put it in his pocket, got on the subway, and then when he saw David passed out, the voice of fate came in again and said, they're going to be running an unsuccessful podcast. You will give them a story that will make their podcast go viral. Do it. <laughs> Actually, the Chicago pooper is not a new story. I'd like to be clear with that. Wait, so are you the for tattoo real? shop that one of my consciousness worked at, there was a giant turd about the size of like a, a brick, just like a red brick. Not the same color, but there was just a giant that pile of shit upsetting. that was just left on the drain pipe next to the tattoo shop. So the Chicago pooper has struck many times. Mm -hmm. Never so close, though, as to David's sleeping body. Yeah, it was like being in an episode of Always Sunny. Do you think that's their version of Banksy? Just like that's their art that they leave for the world to discover? I will say that as the, the poop slowly biodegraded, there was what looked to be like pieces of a lighter in it and other baubles. That's really unsettling. That's so really weird. unsettling. <laughs> You're welcome for that. So either that person ate those things, which I'm pretty sure would kill them, or they liked putting things into their rectum. Or they they sculpted that brick of shit around the the various artifacts. <laughs> for that reason. <laughs> <laughs> like like no, a no, bath no. bomb. They, they were making a poop time capsule. <laughs> I've misdescribed this. All right. I've described this wrong. It was a pile. Like it was poop. Uh -huh. 
as it were left like somebody pooped it out okay so it did have the shape of being extruded from an anus. it did have that shape it was just the size the pile was the size of like a brick okay i like the idea of a poop time capsule better and as it degraded over time from like rain and just the element mm-hmm. things were exposed that's all i'm saying okay. oh no it is a magnificent work of art i understand it now no you don't please tell me you don't understand this <laughs> yes i do the biodegradation was part of the message because the human waste that degraded but the plastic within did not oh wow it's, it's like a metaphor mind blown yeah Hey, why don't we talk about the fucking book that we're going to do? I mean, I guess we should. (laughs) We've kind of buried the lead now. Nothing that we talk about in this book or from here is going to be as interesting as those those Chicago pooping stories. (laughs) You mean the Chicago pooper? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) No, you're wrong. This whole bit is going to be prophetic because step one of how to be cool is poop at (laughs) random places. (laughs) I hope that's true. Yeah. (laughs) At the very least, it's a good segue, so I'm gonna I'm gonna seize on it. Um, but yeah, everybody wants to be cool. Everyone wants to be appreciated by friends and loved ones and shitting strangers on the bus. <laughs> and we've captured from the '90s Scholastic Book Fair, which we love to talk about on this show, a dense tome written by Catherine Lamb, a mighty self-help wi- wizard and author of. Just all sorts of things aimed at teens and tweens in the in the mid nineties. Called how to be completely cool. There was a turning point, like a fork in the road in my life. And a one road led a place where I had many friends, you know, active social life and all that, and probably found a sex at some point. At that exact moment was when I asked to get a skateboard so that I could learn to Ollie the twist. Go. Like and be a real yeah. cool kid. And I was denied that, and now here we are. Let's all turn our lime green baseball caps backwards and drink a can of Surge. (laughs) Should we talk about the cover, David? Probably a little bit. So it's just, it's a couple. It's a a boy and a girl in just sort of generic 90s fashion. Nothing extreme. Mm -hmm. They're dressed like teenagers, but they look like they're about 25. It's true. They're dressed like teenagers who just came from church. Also true, yeah. They both look really uncool. Like, the guy looks, like, extremely (laughs) uncomfortable to be in anyone's presence. You don't have a basis of comparison because you have no idea what the 90s really looked like, Chris. You can only look back on it. Everyone looked like that in the 90s. That was like the 90s look. No, no, I'm 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 talking about the clothes. I'm talking about his expression. He looks very uncomfortable to be talking to someone. That's pretty accurate. Yeah, that's pretty 90s. Yeah. Yeah. They weren't using sarcasm, so they didn't know how to interact with one another. Exactly. It was before the irony poisoning took hold. (laughs) (laughs) But there, there are little speech bubbles on here, and the guy is thinking, she's so cool. And the girl is thinking, I wish I hadn't had beans for lunch. Because she has gas in her rectum. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, now that's, she's yeah. going to be uncomfortable and possibly fart. Yeah. That's the joke, uh, JPEG? Yep, yep, yep. Fun story. After looking at the cover of this book, it occurred to me that I almost bought it one time. Oh, no shit. Yeah, this was probably... Oh, God, 15 years ago. So I was like in my (laughs) mid-20s and I was wandering through a bookstore and I saw this on the rack. It might have been half price books. It might have been a new bookstore when those still existed and were places you could go to physically. (laughs) But I picked it up and I like flipped through it for a second. And I think it was on like super steep discount (laughs) or like $2.99. And I thought this could be fun to just have somewhere and just randomly generate conversation Mm -hmm. so i'm kind of amused because i did not in fact buy it at that point (laughs) (laughs) it damned myself to being uncool but now we're here yeah although i I kind of wish you had bought it because then i wouldn't have had to troll obscure corners of the internet to make it available for the podcast that's true yeah can you imagine the sultry sounds of david's baritone and the turning of papyrus <laughs> well, i would have just transcribed it into a single scroll that way i could just <laughs> pull it down that's, that's nice. what i do with all the other ones you are a mighty wizard so uh i guess before we teach both ourselves and you how to be completely cool we should remind you that what the coolest thing to do is 
is go to wegiveyoubrainworms.com and click the Patreon link because that's where all the cool people give us their money. If you give us $10, we will make an official Brainworms approved card that says the holder of this card is officially cool. That's not true. We're not going to do that. I mean, I guess if you want like a crudely scrawled JPEG that I made in paint for 10 bucks, I can cook something up for you. But first send them to me because I will give them my physical kiss of blessing. Fair enough. Yep. Do we need to put Chris in the quiet room? I know we don't normally do that during recordings, but (laughs) we'll see. But yeah, we give you brainworms.com. We have a Patreon. We have a Discord. We have other things that we do. You know, check it out. It's a good website, and it is the the biggest wave on the World Wide Web, and it will teach you how to be completely cool. All right. Well, let's do this, then. How to Be Completely Cool by Catherine Lamb. I want to go over the table of contents here. Um, sure. Chapter one is, do you need this book? Uh Uh-huh. Chapter two, the uncoolest cut of all, parents. Chapter three. Already this book is full of shit. (laughs) Cool confidence, how to build it. Chapter four, how to be cool at school. Chapter five, cool speak. Chapter six, cool and the opposite sex. Chapter seven. Cool Creatures, Uncool Creatures, and Chapter 8, Cool Conclusion. I really hope that the cool and uncool creatures is just a list of all the animals that Catherine (laughs) thinks are really cool. Yeah, I kind of want that too. Nothing about them, just a list, like penguins, lions, so on. Yeah, I really want to, uh, definitely we need to know if we need this book. Mm Mm-hmm. So we should start with chapter yeah, one. Yeah, like if you want to cherry pick like the chapters that you think are going to be the most amusing, yeah, I think that might be appropriate yeah. here. I do have to say that I am a little disappointed that the first statement in this book for you know how to be cool is never, ever, ever let anyone see that you own this book. <laughs> like hide it in the deepest <laughs> corner of your house. That's probably in like chapter four. Eat after reading. <laughs> chapter one. Do you need this book? Tick any of the following statements which apply to you or you agree with. Going round the supermarket with mum is fun. If I want to look really smart, I usually borrow mom's or dad's clothes or allow them to advise me. They have excellent taste and I value their opinion. It is important to have a cheery smile on your face at all times in order to brighten other people's lives. Or look like an insane person. That's horrifying. My favorite song is called, I'd Like to Teach the World to Sing. I make a point of sitting near to the teacher at school so I can give my full attention to what they're saying. I start my homework as soon as I get home. In fact, I have placed my desk as near to the front door as possible so that I can immediately sit down and get on with it. <laughs> Feel free to, to take this poll at home, just... listeners, and see how cool you are or aren't. I'm just picturing the parents like tr- walking in and tripping over their kid's desk it's right at the front door. I've asked my parents to get rid of the television, as it is an unnecessary distraction. I eat plenty of vegetables, mostly raw, and fiber-rich foods, since Mummy tells me this will help with my little problem. I wait, eat a what? good breakfast, which includes a cereal called well, uh, Sensible. Wait. Okay, so if I'm reading this correctly... Catherine's guide to how to be cool is to blow it at school, watch as much TV as possible, and be as unhealthy as possible, and have as little individuality as possible. Yeah. And have bad, bad (laughs) BMs. It's cool to be constipated. (laughs) (laughs) So do you think that this book's going to talk about waterbeds? Maybe. I hope so, but I doubt it. Because waterbeds were really cool in the 90s. That's true. Yeah, very important. I'm confident that it's going to talk about skateboard tricks. Okay. I do know that if you fuck a corpse on a waterbed, it does kind of feel like they're involved. You know what I mean? Um, Is that too much? That's why the incinerator didn't run that night. (laughs) (laughs) Kane was trying to reproduce through mitosis. I'm more content about where where he got a waterbed, but let's keep going. It was the other cloning machine. 
I just produced a lot of me's with uh, some slight variations on cell structure. You, you produced a lot of you's, killed them, extracted all the water from them, and then turned all of their skins into like the bed mold and stuffed the water. into. So it's just, it's just a body Dude, bed. if you know how to mess with DNA, you don't have to do all that hard labor. You can just make a flash oh, bed. Oh god, so like, they're technically still alive? I mean, yeah. <laughs> so when I filled a bunch of plastic garbage bags with blood i was just kind of wasting my efforts then yeah oh shit yeah this is what happens because i never applied myself if only i'd had a desk next to the door (laughs) yeah then you would have known david i'm more concerned about the dumpster full of spines that you have well i had to go somewhere they're not there anymore don't worry about it i took care of it i Anyway, let's keep taking this quiz and see if we need this book or not. If you ticked any of the above statements, you need this book. That's a very strong statement. I don't like to watch TV. Oh, you're not cool. If you didn't tick anything, the chances are that you are a cool dude already. So you're just reading this book for a laugh while gliding along on your skateboard, listening to your Walkman. Mind that lamppost. Oh my god, the 90s. I am dubious at what level of meta-ness this book is written on yeah well let's find out i guess yeah hold on let me go get my my super soaker (laughs) (laughs) we'll have a nerf war in the backyard after this (laughs) yeah i'll have to skateboard to your house though that works yeah i'll bring my jarts (laughs) (laughs) your jarts or your jorts wait i'm not sure what a jart is is that the Yawn dart or lawn darts? Yeah, yeah. It's lawn darts. No, no. A jart is a jean shorts that you shart in. No. 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 That might be you, <laughs> but that's a very niche thing that is, is just in Chris world. <laughs> Much like J.O. crystals. Yeah, I don't I don't know if we need a, a word for that. <laughs> Are you saying that I was the only kid who had jarts? Yeah. I, I'm sure you're not the only one. You're the only one that referred to them that way. <laughs> well, no, here's the thing. I'm sure you're not the only person who's crapped a pair of jorts. <laughs> you're probably the only person that has a specific name for the jorts right. that you crap in. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and really, my question is, do you like stop what you're doing and run to the other room to grab those <laughs> if you feel a fart <laughs> coming on jorts. just in case? <laughs> These are the things we need to know. (laughs) You know what? We don't need to know. One more outburst like that, Chris, and you might have to go to the quiet room. It's never quiet in my quiet room. Exactly. Exactly. Remember, it is only human to lose your cool from time to time, and the occasional or more frequent uncool episodes and incidents in your life unite you with the majority of human beings. Cool quiz! But how do you get out of a situation which has become too uncool to handle? What is your cool quota? (laughs) It's from the 90s, so obviously suicide. (laughs) Oh. But too soon? (laughs) (laughs) Nah. (laughs) It's like 30 years ago now. Yeah. Right? Oh my god. What is your cool quota? CQ. Answer the questions in the following quiz to find out. One. Your mum brings out an embarrassing photo of you as a baby on a rug with no clothes on and shows it to your friends. What do you say? Hold on. Let let him finish, Chris. Shut the fuck up. (laughs) I'm sorry. A. Mum, how could you? That's so embarrassing. And you stamp your foot or plonk yourself down on the sofa with arms folded and a face like thunder. B. Oh, wasn't I just so adorable? Isn't that the cutest thing? C. That's not me. That's Paul. I know it's a bit difficult to tell because the rug's in the way, but you can still see it's Paul. Never mind, (laughs) Mum. I've heard that memory is one of the first things to go. Oh my god, I was about to say, like, that's not me, that's Paul. I know you made a mistake because you have Alzheimer's. Is there a D? No, just A, B, and C. I'm gonna go with C. You're just going with C? Nobody else weighing in here? Uh, you know, I'll take C as well. I think that, that holds up. The only, like, why oh my there... god, just A, B, or C, Chris. <laughs> yeah, Jesus we got it. Christ. No, this this no, is a, a six-question quiz. Put your answers in and we'll find out how you did at the end. I'm creating my own answer. D, no, which is not. no A, B, or C. 
I didn't A, like, B, or C. Like if with that stuff ever. Are you happened, just abstaining? I, I is that no? Is that... I no. Like I'm saying that when stuff like that happened, I didn't have a reaction. It was just like this is a thing that's happening, and I didn't have a reaction to it. Fair enough. All, All right. right. What's so, the second question? Two. Your dad insists on performing a magic trick in front of your friends, but it goes hopelessly wrong. He stabs a pencil How through a man's yeah. head. <laughs> <laughs> this suggests that I had friends. <laughs> that's true. A. You stand in the doorway, cringing visibly, rigid with embarrassment, unable to move or speak, blushing horribly and sweating profusely. Or B, you shriek, oh, isn't my dad just so adorable? Don't you just want to give him a great big hug? You proceed to do so. C, you say, don't worry, dad, it's cool. Come on, guys, let's go and watch TV. Obviously C. My dad never flubbed his magic tricks. I like B, but only because of the shrieking. <laughs> <laughs> Although I would like to say that my dad was a Baptist minister. So his, his his magic tricks were dipping people in water? Yeah. And probably just whenever you saw him, you stood in the doorway, cringing visibly, rigid with embarrassment, unable to move or speak, blushing horribly and sweating profusely. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, I'm going to go with C. My answer is C again. All right. In lieu of... You know, my Jesus father Christ, didn't... Chris. The amount of time it takes for you to protest is like the <laughs> amount of time it would take for me to finish my answer. So you're, you're making this just so A, much B, more or C, than it has man. To be. A, B, or C. In lieu of my dad didn't flub his magic tricks, I'm gonna say C. <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, B. I meant B. The, the hugging one. Okay, okay. You guys have to keep track of your answers yourself. By the way, I'm not. I'm not doing that. Right. Three. Person you like chats you up for the very first time. How do you react? A. You are stricken dumb. Your jaw sags slightly and you gaze at him or her open-mouthed. Eventually, you manage to say, Grrr. B. You exclaim, Wow! Do you fancy me? I've fancied you for ages. Shall we go out together? How many children do you want? C. You say, Hi, and give a little smile before wandering off to get yourself a drink or something to eat. Uh, C. <laughs> yeah, I mean, since there's not an option, because I'm trying to project myself into, like, it's 1996, and there's not an option that involves Star Wars or Magic the Gathering, <laughs> uh, probably C. Yeah, I'm going to go with C, just, like, just to get out of the situation as fast as possible. I gotta be honest, my response at the time, and probably still now, is mostly A. Sure. That was what I was going to go with, but C provided the get out of the situation as fast as possible part. <laughs> Four, your mom insists you wear a naff, yuck brown raincoat before she will let you go out with your friends who are waiting at the door. What do you do? A, throw a fit, stamp your foot, shout at your mom, it's horrible, so are you, and stomp off to your room, slamming the door shut behind you, leaving everyone not knowing quite what to do or say next and leaving your friends getting wet waiting for you in the rain. The final straw is one of them asks your mom if they can borrow the raincoat. B. Make a great show of putting the raincoat on and parading around in it, striking poses and attitudes, and generally playing the fool. C. B. You turn the situation to your advantage by shouting, Thanks, Mom! Seizing the raincoat and dashing to your room with it. You return a few minutes later, wearing the raincoat buttoned up to the neck. Your friends look at you a bit strangely until you've turned the corner. You then rip off the wretched raincoat, revealing that you have used it to conceal the fact that you were wearing that sexy mini dress or that t-shirt with the parent offending slogan, which your mom has forbidden you to wear in public. Probably C, but I might just keep wearing the raincoat. It sounds kind of cool. Is there an option to just wear the raincoat? Not strike poses, but just like, okay, and then you put it on and go out because it's not a big deal. The question sort of in implies that it's something you don't want to do that your your parents are trying to convince you to do. Like, Yeah, this quiz is making a lot of assumptions about my taste in raincoats. Yeah, yeah. I guess go with B? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm a B on this one as well. Actually, no, I would say a C because there have been occasions, there were occasions when I was younger where I did effectively just that. Used a coat, like a long coat to, obscure to cover your, up. your sexy yeah. miniskirt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five, you're in a crowd, which includes person you like. You are all chilling out in someone's room, listening to music. The CD comes to an end, and you bend down to take it out of the machine, when, to your complete horror, you fart. Audibly. There is no polite way of putting this. Sorry. 
It is the single most desperately uncool thing you have ever done in your life. How can you possibly ever recover? A. You run out of the room, out of the house, all the way back to your own room, where you intend to hide for the rest of your life. B. One or more of your friends is almost bound to start laughing. You join in the laughter until you're rolling around on the floor, shrieking hysterically. And farting more. I'm not shrieking in this quiz. Just, just giggling and farting. <laughs> C. You say calmly, whoops, too many beans, or mom's chili is something else. You don't want to know the effect it has on the dog. Then you put on your favorite music and close your eyes for a while in order to enjoy it more. I had a plan for this if this ever happened to me in public. It never did, but my plan, I decided, was if I ever fart audibly in public and it's embarrassing, just go, well, in for a penny, in for a pound, and then just release whatever I had left. Just shit your just pants. Just go run home and grab your jarts. <laughs> <laughs> okay guys you deserve this because i accidentally tooted yep so now i'm gonna shit myself in front of you I'm gonna, now i'm gonna shit my jorts <laughs> you deserve this for being friends with me yeah i was initially uh, on board with b and then it devolved into just madness <laughs> yeah like someone cast tasha's hideous laughter on the group yeah so i think c again i'm mostly c's yeah i'm gonna go with c on this one i mean now certainly it would be c as a teenager though i probably would have been either a or b depending assuming i had friends yeah that i hung right. out with it would depend on the friends i was with you know yeah probably the b laughing hysterically I mean, by the time we were hanging out on a regular basis, I had seen your dick and balls so many times that you <laughs> farting just wouldn't have mattered. Right, right, right yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with B just because the people that I generally hung out with, you know, considering my general awkwardness, they weren't judgmental <laughs> people. So I'm going to go with B. And farts are funny. It's true. Yeah. Six, your parents are refusing to let you go to Gary Coolford's party <laughs> since they've heard rumors <laughs> that, that his party's... cool kid. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if your name is Gary Coolford, you're, you're basically fucked. Sorry, Gary. That's just Gary Coleman in disguise. He'd be cool. Yeah. No, he wouldn't. <laughs> Imagine Gary Coleman trying to act like a 90s kid. Hello, fellow kids. <laughs> 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 the, we the weird thing is that he thought he needed a disguise when he didn't to look like a kid. Your parents are refusing to let you go to Gary Coolford's party since they heard rumors that his parties tend to get rather wild. How do you deal with this? A. You shout at your parents, I hate you! Are you completely determined to ruin my whole life? Then you storm off to your room, slamming the door again, and rip up a photo of your mum and dad into tiny shreds which you throw onto the floor and jump up and down on. And set on fire. That sounds like you need to get a professional, like a medical professional, to evaluate that child. B, you have a bright idea. I know. Why don't you come with me, Mom? You could come too, Dad. I'm sure Gary wouldn't mind. We'd all have a great time. C, you pause to consider your parents' point of view. And reason with yourself that in a few years' time, you should have a place of your own. And then you can do what you like. In the meantime, you say, I know it's hard for you, Mom and Dad. You get worried because you care, I guess, but I wouldn't do anything stupid. Anyway, I'll accept what you say, because I'm still under your roof. If you don't want me to go to Gary's party, that's cool. But if you change your minds and decide to let me go, that's cool too. Your parents are so stunned and taken aback by this sudden outburst of maturity and downright coolness that they decide to let you go to Gary's party after all. Obviously C. Yeah, C gets you what you want. Like, Where is the option for I didn't want to go to parties? Yeah. All of these options <laughs> suck. Look, it presupposes, all right? These, this questionnaire presupposes that you're fucking cool, man. Almost as cool yeah, but as it, Gary no, but... Colford, all right? It, it presupposes that you want to go to this party. Yeah. No, if, if this was a quiz for how to become cool i could answer these questions if it if, but this is a question of which one of these reflects you the most and like i like i all of these are equally inadequate at describing me. i might as well flip a coin or something i'll flip your coin do it so now we find the answers here mostly a's your cq cool quota is a little on the low side you need this book but there is certainly hope for you try to relax Remember that running away is effective, but not cool. 
Remember, too, that no one has ever, to my knowledge, actually died of embarrassment. And perhaps things, or parents, are not quite as embarrassing or dreadful as you think they are. Mostly bees. You've obviously read a book called How to Be Seriously Uncool and taken its advice to heart. It's probably time to change for your own sake and everyone else's. Wait, is she shilling like another book that she wrote? No, no, be... that's, no. that's not what's happening. God damn it. <clears throat> Mostly C's. Wow, you are some kind of cool dude, man. Yo. <laughs> your CQ is right off the top of the scale. You may not need this book. But why not read it anyway? We like <laughs> to do things it. for a laugh. Why not pay for it anyway? But never an over loud or forced laugh. In fact, a cool smile is more your style. You may even pick up some new tips to add to your repertoire. I am very confused at what age bracket this is targeting. Like, look at the kids on the cover, but this is like pre-high school stuff. Yeah, this is like probably pointed toward people between the ages of 11 and 16 mm -hmm. like 12 and 16 maybe right yeah what is cool cool is knowing what to say cool is being confident cool is looking good cool is knowing worshiping you're the looking good. <laughs> cool is being in control cool is focused but perhaps cool is more than that. These are also all of the requirements needed to be a serial abductor. <laughs> That's true. Cool is having an unmarked white van in a parking lot. <laughs> cool is not getting stressed if you don't always know exactly what to say. Cool is not caring too much if you're not always in complete control. Wait. Cool is being in control. But also not caring too much if you're not always in complete control. Yeah, hey, I, now. Come on, I, lady. Mm. I want to take these rules, put them into a robot, and then watch the robot kill itself going through logic loops. Cool is being relaxed and laid back about life in general. I am so not cool. <laughs> <laughs> no. Catherine, let me introduce you to a thing called anxiety. <laughs> yeah. Cool should be fun. Cool is not recording unpopular book podcasts. <laughs> I do like the art on the following page. The, the art in this book is very much uh, just sort of like sketch line drawings mm -hmm. that um, the artist herself or the author herself drew, apparently. Are they at least charming? They're fairly charming. I mean, they're, they're kind of like the same style of art that you would see in uh, like a Reader's Digest. Mm -hmm sort of thing i guess the or somewhere between reader's digest and mad magazine but yeah the art has three different people and there's a guy wearing a beanie cap and it says cool hat and there's a guy wearing like a fucking deer stalker cap i get i don't know it's a cap with flaps mm -hmm. so it's got the brim and then it's got the like flaps that come down over your ears on the side and it says, cool hat. And then there's a guy wearing a hat that says, it's a ball cap, says, kiss me quick. And it has like moose antlers coming out of the sides of it. And what? little deedly bob things with bells. And it says, uncool hat. And I'm sorry, but of those three, like the beanie, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm down with beanies. Anyone can pull off a beanie. Anyone should wear one if their head is cold. But I'm honestly going to tell you right now that I think I would more quickly speak to someone wearing the big moose antlers hat than I would the guy wearing the, like, hipster ear flap hat. Sure. I guess that's, you know, being 25 years into the future from when this was written. <laughs> okay, so this is a book defining how to be cool as defined by someone's mom. It does have that energy, yeah. That's true, actually, yeah. Okay. I mean, I assume she is someone's mom. The other narrative that I th thought up for this story is that this book is an intentional sabotage of people in their developmental years that turn them into unconfident, meandering folks. Are you accusing this book by... of being a psyop? <laughs> I don't know what a psyop is. Anyway. But yeah, to turn them into those kinds of people to then buy more of Catherine's self-help books. So yes. He is, in fact, accusing this book of being a psyop. Cool.
The but word someone cool. tell me what a psyop is. Look quick. it up. Yeah, oh. it's actually funnier to not tell you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the word cool may mean different things to different people. You may not consider it cool to wear a floppy velvet hat which comes down over your face so you have to hold your head right up and peer down your nose to see where you're going. But Laura Pemberton wears hers all the time, and she looks good in it. Perhaps being cool is a matter of not being afraid to be an individual. You strut your funky stuff in your own way. Don't strut your funky stuff in public. Nobody wants to see that. I want to see that. (laughs) This book, How to Be Cool. Be an individual. Now do all the things that this book tells you to do. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, it's difficult to strut your funky stuff in an (laughs) anorak, a bobble hat, and a pair of cast off slacks. I don't agree. But what if you like those things? A mega uncool name for trousers, strides, etc. of your dad's, which your mom has taken up so that they're too short for you. So there must be certain things which are generally, if not universally, recognized as being uncool just as there are things which are definitely cool. And yeah, you know, the art there is of someone in a bobble hat and anorak. Uh-huh. They just look like it's cold. It's really what it comes yeah. down to. Like, I mean, I guess it is by definition uncool since they're warm. Those are warm clothing items. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a very warm outfit. Yeah. The Concise Oxford Dictionary defines cool as unexcited, calm as in cool and collected. So you could just as easily say to someone, wow, you're looking really collected. The coolest thing to do in public is reference the dictionary. (laughs) If peeing yourself is cool, consider me Miles Davis. (laughs) That's how you know that the podcast has just gone downhill. (laughs) When you start throwing Adam Sandler movie quotes. Yeah. It's just a downward spiral from that point. Like there, there's a graph and like at the very bottom with like a no red one bar. catch what I just did. <laughs> you know what? Fuck it. Just keep going. Dave. <laughs> just, just hammer this out. But for some reason, it was the word cool which caught on. The dictionary also mentions that cool is just another word for excellent. As far as I'm concerned, the concise Oxford Dictionary is an excellent book, but there is nothing particularly cool about it. So I'm going to put it back on the shelf. I seriously thought she was going to say, in my opinion, the concise Oxford Dictionary can go to hell. (laughs) Misleading phrases involving the word cool. As cool as a cucumber. Let's face it. There is nothing particularly cool about a long green vegetable which your dad or granddad throws in the garden. It's really cool in my unmarked white panel fan. (laughs) It's even less cool if your name is Jeremy Witherspoon and your mum makes dinky little triangular cucumber sandwiches with the crust removed and sends you to school with them. I I feel like she's just talking about things from her life. Right. That's very specific, Catherine. Something (laughs) you want to tell us? And I would like a cucumber sandwich. That sounds good. I love cucumber sandwiches. That sounds good to me. Yeah. Like, I guess if I was the kid that came to school with cucumber sandwiches every day that my mom made, then yeah, I could see that being a source of getting picked on, but... Leave the sandwiches out of this. That's society's problem, not yours, yeah. Cool hands, warm heart. Cool hand loop. Just because you have poor circulation and your hands are like frozen bunches of carrots, different color, hopefully, doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to give away all of your money, what money, to charity at the earliest opportunity. What the fuck is so happening confused. right now? Did you just open up another book? Nope. These are misleading phrases involving the word cool. What are cool hands anyway? Perhaps if you're a ghoul, a girl, not a ghoul, um, perhaps <laughs> no, sir, that would have made this so much cooler. Yeah. <laughs> ghouls are pretty cool. Boys and ghouls. Boils and ghouls. <laughs> well, this is very stupid and we've been doing it for a long time. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I finally know how to be cool. Do you know how to be? Are you going to enact these policies in your everyday life? I'm going to use them every day now. Okay. I feel much cooler already. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you seem cooler to me. Yeah. Let I me mean, just uh, summarize this book. Chris, these aren't going to work for you. Let me just summarize Chris, this no. book for our You're listeners. Too young. If you really want to be cool, as deemed by everyone else, forsake everything that is yourself, all your personal desires, dreams, personality, etc. Conform to a cookie cutter personality, learn how to do a kickflip, and die inside, slowly. 
Yeah, cool skateboard tricks will definitely make you cool. Yeah, Chris, you're too young to understand how this book works. And then, congratulations, you will be cool, and it, it will be totally worth it. No. I think, really, the only thing you said there that has any merit is die inside. That's what worked <laughs> for me. Learn to shut down all your inside feelings. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and just conform and be an emotionless automaton, and you'll get pretty far in life. Just read this book. This yeah. will this yeah. will teach you what you need to know. Can we? Get, can I get in the furnace? Yeah, let's let's do that. I mean, we're not all getting in the furnace. But I mean, you're welcome. I would love some furnace action. <laughs> just open the door. Come on in, buddy. I am way too cool. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, uh, I guess I'll tell you to go to wegiveyoubrainworms.com. If you need to. That's what a cool person would do, would be to go to wegiveyoubrainworms.com. Or that's what someone that thinks they're cool would do. An actual cool person wouldn't do that at all. Should sh- should we have a like a mental health hotline linked on our website? I think that's a good idea for every website. You're not wrong, yeah. yeah. If you stumble upon that at the right time, then yeah, I can see the advantage of that. No, no, I, I mean that halfway genuinely and halfway as a joke for like, like if, if you're the kind of person that likes us, you need help. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, go to our dumb website. You can give us money to do this and buy these stupid books. Um, Remember, supporting us supports these authors. I mean, when you say it like that, <laughs> yeah. that sounds bad. <laughs> yeah. In fact... Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> we are members supported by listeners like you, much like public radio, but worse. Yeah. A lot worse. <laughs> yeah. That's right, so the furnace. Something. I can get in the furnace. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. I'm just going to, yeah, if you're, a, if you're a YouTube listener, like, subscribe, click the bell. Thank you for listening, and we are very sorry. So sorry. This has been a production of Brainworms Podcast. Any copyrighted content contained within is used for purposes of review. Brainworms Podcast is David Combs, Kane Magdalene, Christian Schaefer, and Joseph Wells. The theme music is HodgePod Number no. 1 by Brian Davis. If you like what you heard, you can support us and learn about our other projects at wegiveyoubrainworms.com or by leaving a review on your favorite listing app. Oh my god, that's poop! Gargh!